I am Dr. Canfield returning with another little study of a very basic part of your day. And one of the things, even pre pandemic, um, we've noticed for many people, there's a lot of stress that comes long before they arrive to either the workplace, place of education, whatever it is they have scheduled to do. It could even be a pleasant activity, thus the notion of approach avoidance. But one way of measuring this very similar to how we were starting to look at in the past module if you saw it it's great if you didn't that's fine but trying to get some data on what might predict an improved experience not an ideal vacation like experience but something that might be the smallest tweak that could either reduce your perception of stress, it could factually get you out the door quicker, it could get you out the door with everything you need, and give you some rewards. And yes, I've been criticized for, are you coddling? Mm, I think if we study leadership, we note that the comparison between boss and leader is isn't coddling or individualized considerations. And we must include the considerations that may be physiological. This may have been long before any sort of change in your work format before the pandemic, before any changes, that you may struggle getting up. You may struggle with, oh, it's that repetitive, you got to get up and you got to shave or you've got to brush your teeth or take a shower or comb your hair, or whatever it is. And what can we do to not eliminate those we'd like you to still brush your teeth but if there are different revisions in this what seems like a very simple action plan but when you consider you do it every single day probably even on your non-work days or your non-dedicated to get to a place days you have a, a semblance of, well, I guess I better get ready. And sometimes people say, get ready for what? Where are you going? Well, I'm get ready, you know, get ready. And so what this looks at, and it's something I've used with many clients over the years. Sometimes we call it the get up to sit down program because they realize that they've been hitting the snooze so long that all they have to look forward to if they get up and they usually do because they are conscientious to get to work but to look forward to a whirlwind hurricane tornado blowing out the door as fast as you can is not inviting. It is not motivating. It does increase stress. And it just like we say, when we hurry rather than slow down, and errors may decrease, you may remember things that you need to take 
You may remember things during your, what we'll go through here in a moment, your sit down time as you prepare in a relaxed format, maybe with your favorite tea or coffee or whatever it is you like. And looking at this and then we don't have a column on, on this particular slide, but you can add, however you'd like to orchestrate this, a, a notation as to the quality of each part. It could be each of these little sections, the wake up time. It could be the quality of just your basic preparation and then it leads you to, well, what did you do to change that? Then looking at that sit down time and noting the correlation between when I have that, that seems to improve my energy. It paces me. It could be a synergistic goal satisfier of preparing a little bit of reading Ah, look in the news, didn't know that that bank also had an issue. Or it could be something very positive, it gives you optimism in, oh, I better get down there and see how that's going to influence what we're working on. It certainly may look at what we're seeing and pretty hard facts of late, of layoffs, sudden dismissals. Those can be your neighbors and friends and family, or some of these more well-known names that seem to catch people's attention. And it must be difficult to be that person and still have the same human needs, but being in a celebrity or well-known status, having it amplified and maybe misconstrued. But when you think about that, that's yet another continuum that it really doesn't help when a medical doctor says, oh, I've seen much worse cases than yours. And it's not that we have no empathy for those other patients, but okay, it's a little dismissive, you know, so no problem is greater than another for any one person, but the strategies could differ in how you can do very small adjustments to even, and we're purposely doing this in a simple way, you're getting ready in the morning time. And this was a little speedy to have day one, day two, day three, but I'm trying to simplify that too. It's a sample, but let's just quickly look. What do we mean wake up time? All right, so many of us, are not blessed with that ability just to wake up when we're supposed to wake up. Some people do, or they wake up with the sun, or they just have a very sharp body clock. So, but if you have an alarm, maybe even as backup, then it is something you know about yourself. If you're going to snooze five times, maybe that is something that eases you in. It could even be a physiological state. There are conditions that a slow rise is suggested by a medical doctor. There might be some dizziness, blood pressure concerns, maybe even blood sugar concerns, thus having food or at least a smoothie or something built in there is imperative. 
So the trial one day shows that person took quite a bit of their pie <laughs> to wake up and thereby the basic prep time did get squeezed and maybe if it was not organized such as where in the world is the new toothpaste we did the last of that when i forgot now oh dear you know silly things like that sometimes make us more frustrated than even more of a crisis that is a little bit of an objective crisis not quite the subjective crisis but it is big and that makes it seem worse that i'm getting so upset over not being able to find the toothpaste but if you have this notion of get up to sit down now it could require if you are a five minute get ready out the door person and that's just the way you're wired but you'd like to explore this it could require a slightly earlier alarm time. We're not looking to cut into anyone's sleep. That could then relate to going to bed a little earlier, but it might not. It's, it's not hours and hours that we're talking about here, but these minutes and even knowing that it's a whole lot nicer to think about getting up, getting some basics taken care of or getting things going. Could be setting your coffee, setting the tea, maybe putting something in the microwave if you are heating something up, feeding the cat, feeding the dog, whatever it is that you've got some of those tasks taken care of. So You've already accomplished something. You've completed something. You did get up in a timely fashion. If we kind of scoot over to trial day two and then basic prep might go down because the night before you might think about, oh, yes, not only I remember that toothpaste incident, but we've run out of face soap or lotion or whatever is part of your ordinary morning prep. And you know what that is. It could be some vitamins, could be medications. And again, those are bigger ticket items. Let's say you need to take your medication at a certain time in the morning. And sometimes thyroid medication, there are various medications that require taking them and waiting to eat, which is tough for someone who tends to run a little low on their blood sugar. So timing really does matter. Also, if you're stressed, there might be a tendency to forget it. And so if you need to pack an emergency supply of medications, have it, you know, fairly safely packed away in a zipped up thing so that it's not just going to spill out. Or if there are children on hand, pets on hand, somewhere along the way, everybody stays safe. And then finally, organizing and taking your leave. So the goal is to get out that door. And as we said in therapy, if we slept through the alarm and we really missed almost every one of these sections, the goal to get out that door is direct nothing is added on, quick teeth brushing, combing hair, 
no checking social media, <laughs> very little, if any, sit down, which is motivating, but we're not self-blaming either. Sometimes by the end of the week, or you might be coming down with a cold, you you have a harder time waking up. You don't hear the alarm. Your ears are stuffed up or the ringer isn't loud enough. There could be just countless things. So compassion, simplification, be kind to yourself and aim to fit in this sort of reward system. It's not coddling. It's respecting your individual differences, and it may even help you as you sit down in your comfortable chair, maybe with a kitty by your side or somebody, and you're either going through some readings of world events or local events or your industry's events or something pleasurable, catching up maybe checking your bank balances, maybe, hopefully that's not upsetting, but it is reality. So it's good to know first thing. And then checking at the end of the day, how did that influence not just each section in terms of quality, but really taking a little more time to pace yourself, get to your destination in a timely fashion may give you more energy. And I think most of us have been told when we've rushed in late, you know, you're creating your own stress. If you get up earlier or leave earlier, you wouldn't be so frazzled. Well, yes, yeah, that's right. But they don't know that we had a flat tire on the way, but that's fine. We're just noting, yeah, you're right, that I didn't want to be stressed, but here I am. Some of us are maximizers of time and don't want any minute to go unmaximized and so can creep over the line of realistic thinking. So we have to have realistic thinking. And I like to say some of us are just optimists that that one time, I remember I got there in 17 minutes, but that's where the collision of optimism, which is very, very nice, but if it keeps running into realism that however ordinarily it's more of an average of probably 30 minutes so allowing more time now if that's really disconcerting that i got there early and so what do i do you can reward yourself or you can just appreciate okay i can catch my breath get myself set and sit down, get everything organized, ready to go. You might be noticed, you might not. It's not so much for show, it's for you. And it will remind you that it's not catastrophic if you do get there a little early. But over time, the average probably balances out, at least when you consider an ordinary commute of any any sort in not just a city, suburban, you know, bedroom communities traveling in, you can meet up with congestion, hopefully not an accident, but something can slow you down or a flat tire. So really anywhere across the country and the world, no doubt, this would apply in one way or another, but having that data and seeing those pie slices and how they shift and shift and shift, substitute in different, maybe fitness, maybe checking to see if rather than a smoothie, 
maybe making some scrambled eggs or having something all ready to go the night before or just ready to go period then grabbing that and going might be necessary sometimes but if you have more time you can take your time that could correlate with your physiological energy it could see you through without a rumbling tummy by lunchtime even if you have very light lunch probably want to have a little bit of something to keep the steady energy flow and your metabolism churning along all right give it a try these are all so simple if i can do it anybody can do it plugging in these numbers in most programs and running the data is not really any big run it really calculates it for you and see what you come up with if you'd like to send it our way that'd be great if not that's fine thank you very much i'm dr canfield i'll see you soon